not in front of me. Yep, it is. Okay, and we have quorum. So I'd like to welcome everybody to the Green Bay Public Arts Commission. Let's get this puppy rolling. Today's Wednesday, June 14th. It's eight o'clock. Um, Y'all are in City Hall room 604 and the rest of us are virtual. Uh, let's do a roll call real quick. Chair, Katie Reese, not with us today. Mm -hmm. Ken Tyler, Vice Chair, I'm here. Alderman Brian Johnson. Chuck Yang. Here. Alex Zacharias. Here. And then we have liaison representatives, Beth Kowalski. Excused. Uh, Rizal Peguero. Um, Sadie Wilson. Here. <clears throat> Hello. Hi, Sadie. Uh, Timothy Perlowitz. Here. <clears throat> Here. Welcome, Tim. And okay. So our first item is to approve the agenda for today. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? Motion. motion. Second. Motion and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Approval of the minutes from May 24th, 2023. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. I just have it. Okay, so then uh, moving right along to regular business. Item number one is consider with possible action to approve the collaboration of the collaborative community mosaic design proposed by Downtown Green Bay Inc. to be located at 238 Walnut Street. Um, and I believe we do have a few representatives of that project with us today. So uh, let's see here. Laura, should we open up the floor? Do you have anything to mention before we do that? Um, I mean, if you guys have reviewed your agenda packet, you'll kind of get the gist that Down Green Bay has been working with a number of community partners, NWTC, um, as well as two talented artists, Don Krumpos and Keith Carter. They are proposing to create a collaborative clay mosaic. Uh, to take place during Art Fest, July 28th through the 30th. Uh, this mosaic is proposed to be placed on the Cherry Street ramp wall. It's already been approved through Public Works. Uh, we just have to be reviewing the design, which there was a preliminary sketch included in the agenda packet, but I have an updated version that we can share virtually. Yes, please. Yeah, this is this is super cool. So the one image in the bottom left, that was the one that was included with the agenda packet. This was the original image that Public Works uh, reviewed and approved based on that image and the technical data, which I've also included in the packet. It's gonna be clay tiles adhered to uh, plywood panels and then attached onto the wall. So, the image that's on the upper portion, that is the updated version. And I'll let, I can, once we open the floor, I can let Don speak a little bit further on it, but it is very arts and nature focused with emphasis on the river and kind of the wildlife and, and not just wildlife, but activities that we benefit from the river. Great. Thank you, Laura. Uh, can I get a motion to open up the floor? Motion open the floor. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Great. The floor is open. So if you'd like to speak on this, please just state your name and your address for the record. And um, the floor is open. So looks like Jenny and Don are both here on the project. So would either of you like to give us some more scoop on this? Jenny, would you like me to go? I could go. All right, my name is Don Crumpus. My address is 321 Steel Street, Algoma, Wisconsin, 54201. And I've been working with the team, the downtown team, to come up with a design. 
And you saw it there. Um, and I can share my screen again so we can look at it while I talk. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Um, let me. <clears throat> okay, here I have. Can you see? Can you see this? Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. This is the design on the wall. <clears throat> so the main um, idea behind the the design is the river um, and the importance of it. So that's kind of the the main focus of it going through. And you can hopefully see that the design ends up being a little abstract or you you know partially abstract, partially representational, and that's on purpose. Um, you know, mosaics tend to be a little more abstract just because they're the facet of the design, but it also gives us some leeway for some interpretation and also for um, with the participants being all ages um, to allow for some um, changes to happen a little bit based on how they work. So I don't know how, and um, Jenny and Laura, you can comment more on this, but uh, what's going to happen is it's going to be an interactive project where each little tile is done by one participant and um, we'll be managing that um, on the the art fest dates. Wow. So um, each tile could be a little different than shown here. So they could be, you know, they're going to put their own little mark on it. They're going to be scribing into it, adding clay, um, subtracting clay. So you know, have a little top topographical nature. You know, they might put their initials in it, a little tr a little tree or a part of a tree or part of a river, and um, stuff like that. So there will be all these micro images within all of this too, which could look really cool. And the team will be, I'll be there too. And Keith Carter, who you probably know, will be there trying to manage the project and keep like vulgarity out of it and things like that. But but we expect it to go pretty well. Um, so anyway, the, to go back to the abstract nature of the project is to keep it a little, a little more fluid that way. But, um, you know, the idea is there'll be prompts to keep the water blue for the most part in the sky. Um, with some of that uh, sun, sun in it, and things like that. But they'll want to. We want to make them feel like they have their own take on it too, their own interpretation on it. Um, so there's that collaboration between having a design ready, but um, with them being able to have their own their own uh, version of it. Um, okay, and then so yeah, the river is the main the main meaning behind it because it's such an important, you know, artery to our society. It's the reason why. The, um, you know, settlers first came here. Before that, you know, they used it as a life source too, and we still do. It's a very active, big part of our life. Um, you know, we kept the, or I kept the industry out of it to try to make it a little more serene um, and focusing back on the nature properties of it. The the rep, the really the only representational objects are the fish, the sailboat, and the um, the the tree, and then the river itself, and maybe the sky. But otherwise, it's pretty. You know, we left out a lot of the. I, I tried to work in some. Um, fauna but it was a little by the time you get it into the mosaic it gets a little too abstract and i figure that's maybe what um the kids could put into their own tiles too you know maybe some beavers and things like that we could talk about the history of uh the river in the bay so maybe that'll prompt them to put their own little take on it but it'd be nice if they put their own you know modern take on it too what it, you know basically i think the prompt could be something like what does green bay the river the bay mean to you you know that kind of thing and then they can make their tile based on that um, but I think hopefully most of it's self-explanatory, despite my blabbering. Um, I don't know if I could add, take questions or anything. Well, we're, yeah. okay. For clarification, will the participants, so you had mentioned they'll be adding or subtracting clay from each tile. Are they also going to be applying the glaze or the colors to the tiles also, or will that be what you and Keith kind of handle? Yeah, some of that stuff is to be determined because there's some technical things to be figured out. And Keith is the expert on that, but I believe there will be, the idea is, and we'll have to talk to what all, all is possible um, between that the inner team, but I believe it's like there's a, a two or three days of the festival and one day could be making the tiles with the clay and the second day could be glazing. Um, however, there was also talk about bringing it back and glazing it our, ourselves and um, and doing it after the fact. So it's kind of like we have to determine the time factors and the difficulties and all that stuff. But we want to make sure they have as much hands-on as they can get and, you know, even some learning about how the process goes. And again, Keith is the, the, the clay subject matter expert, so we could also defer that question to him. That makes sense. As far as following just the physical capabilities of clay and having it cure in between and all of those steps, um, but yeah, if 
I would just, if participants aren't able to actually apply colors, I think it would maybe be of, and it sounds like you kind of mentioned it a little bit, I think it would be of interest to include just like a little demo of like step one, raw clay, step two, you're working on it, and then eventually we'll be doing this part, just so people can kind of get a full idea of the process, I think is, yeah. is nice. No, that's a very good idea. I'll write that down. Don, what do you expect the timeline to be? Um, I, I don't know if that was mentioned in your application, but like from the actual start to the, you know, actual adhering this to the wall. Yeah, the um, I was pretty much concerned with this front end process, and you know, we're trying to get through all the all the um, approval processes, and then once we're done, we'll probably like really grind to you know make sure all the details are figured out because we don't want to spend tons of time unless all the approvals are made. But we've done, I think, the necessary diligence to get that far. But so anyway, to answer your question, um, you know, there'll be like some really um, a lot of time spent on those two days, of course, and a little bit before getting everything ready. But then after that, yeah, Keith will go to work getting it prepared. And then um, Jenny, you might be able to answer this better, but I believe that there was a date set for the hanging of it. And at that point, I'll just be kind of like a person holding things and Keith will be in charge. Um, but I believe it was sometime late it was later than you know so it was at least a couple of weeks or a month after the the festival sure. right. and i don't know we, we could talk about that but making that into a little like ribbon cutting event as well and maybe mm -hmm. some of the participants would want to come down and see the design but yeah so some of that's still open um but yeah it was going to be after the festival quite, uh, quite a bit at least a couple of weeks i think mm -hmm. right yeah a few several weeks built in there just so you could have time to make it the way you would like it um yeah, I just was going to add that um, we did receive some grant money um, through a state program for this um, for this piece, and um, it was really important, um, or it's going to be important for us to include as much help from the public as possible. Um, and one of the themes was kind of like everybody can be an artist. You know, there's a lot of people that, including myself, that I feel like I don't have the art gene, I can't do this, but you know, can I make a little tile that will be a part of a mural yes I can and so that's really what we're trying to do is let everyone know they can be an artist um, as part of this so it'll have that kind of underlying theme as well as we go forward um, we haven't worked out all of the details yet with um, how much help will be needed as well as far as getting volunteers to to help you um, Don and, and Keith but um, that's all part of this um, you know we'll, we'll, that, that's the next step after after this um, hopefully gets approved um, We'll have other hands available to you on site to, to help move this as far forward as possible throughout the festival weekend. Hey, Jenny, can you please mention your first and last name and your address, oh, please? I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, Jenny Van and Langenberg, 3174 Turquoise Trail, Green Bay. Thank you. And and thank, thank you for the uh, explanation. That, that was helpful. Um, I have a quick question, if that's okay. Yeah. Yes. This is uh, Tim Perlowitz. Uh, two, I guess, two quick questions. First is, is there going to be a acknowledgement of those who've contributed? Are you going to document at any point yeah. the, the number of public citizens who have contributed to this piece with a sort of place holder for that? Yes, we will. And then part of the, the grant um, process that we're receiving, we do have to report back on several of those, those statistics of, of who all helped out, what, you know, all the things and we have to give them um, a lot of credits. Um, throughout this process as well. So that will be done through um, probably press release when this is ready. Um, you had mentioned like some sort of a ribbon cutting type or a reveal um, that that will all happen um, once it's once it's up and ready to go. Um, so so there will be definitely proper acknowledgements all the way around. And then the second part of this would be uh, the vetting. So you mentioned that on each tile, like there's a structural layout which creates this this piece, but then individually, within each of these sort of uh, tile pieces, there is the opportunity to decorate and design them. Are, is there gonna be a, uh, a checks and balances to make sure that everything is is vetted and do you have a replacement plan in the offhand chance someone puts something that maybe should not be on there? Anna can let you answer that, but I, I, I you know, there will definitely be a lot of um, helpers on site that would kind of oversee that and I'm sure you know, when it all gets put together in the end, that nothing would be included that that wouldn't be appropriate. So, 
Yeah. And I feel like, the, like you said, the, the volunteers and the staff working will be pretty hands-on helping yeah. people. And I imagine, yeah, but it's good to have that backup plan. You're right. To, to, because there always is the, uh, the rotten egg or whatever um, that can, and it might sneak through. So I think we didn't talk about it yet, but I think the idea of a replacement plan could be good. Hopefully it's, hopefully it doesn't happen at all, but um, you know, if there's one or two, we could certainly replace it with uh, just a quick little custom tile. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's a very good point. And I think I, I imagine what it'll be because everybody will be so glad to be there. And you know, the, the, the couple painting paint by numbers I've done that the community is just so excited to be there. And so like, just happy to put their paintbrush to the wall, or in this case, you know, just to be touching. I feel like it's going to go good. And a lot of, a lot of little kids, you know, I can imagine a lot of little kids and we'll, we'll be right there helping them, but, but yeah, that's a very good point and we'll watch out for it. What size are the tiles? They're varying sizes, but they're roughly about four inches to five inches each. That's bigger than I was expecting. Yeah, there was some debate. Some people wanted a couple feet and, um, but then I thought, you know, we couldn't get enough. I, we don't know how many people are really going to come to this event. I think you all know about that. But, but I expect a couple hundred, several hundred, I, I would think. Because like little events we do out here in Algoma for the paint by numbers, we get a couple hundred people. So I can't even... I mean, I don't, I don't know if we can <laughs> handle more than, more than a thousand, but that that's quite a bit. But anyway, yeah, we want to have a lot of tiles to handle yeah. a lot of people. There might be the, the want from that many people to participate. You know, there could be a thousand, but we will just have to do the best we can with what's there. Um, you know, but, you know, we just plan for you know the, a few hundred, and um, and we'll focus on that and do it well. Yeah. And we can make that known in the communications to the public as well. Um, you know, participate in our community uh, community art project um, as you know, kind of first come, come first serve type situation. But we can communicate the timeline that we'll be working on the different parts of it um, throughout the event. So I wouldn't. I'm not sure. Uh, you, again, this is all to be determined yet as far as the timing goes. Um, so you know, between these hours, come and do this. Between these hours, let's do this. So. So is this going to be open to any uh, participants kind of say like if my kids are walking down the street during art fest and hey can we go paint is that how it is or is it something they have to sign up for yes i would anticipate we're not doing a sign up a pre-sign up on this one it will be if you're there and would like to participate and there's tiles available or something for you to do available then then that will happen is Chuck, I'll know that you're the one that wants to do the tiles, not your kids. Hey, I can I helped you. <laughs> I have a question. Is this is this size, is this what the size will be like when it's done? Or is this just an approximation of where you have the design at? Will there be the open space below? And this will be like a yes, there will be the open space below. We wanted it up high, um, just so that people don't mess with it too much because it will be extending out from the the wall and so we just want to make sure there's enough room um still for people to get through on the sidewalk because we anticipate it coming out um three to four inches from the wall and um it will measure about three feet high which is you know from the top so three feet from the top but it'll still be very visible from the road or you know from the sidewalk and then you know on the road as people are driving by, but not so, you know, a huge distraction that <laughs> they'll get in trouble with that. Um, again, it has been approved by Public Works, so um, we're fine with that. But um, we figured having it up high would just uh, keep it a little safer, um, less chance of, of graffiti or damage being done to it. And I think just with snow removal and having to not worry about that as much too with really being up higher. higher. Yep. Yep. Any other questions from our liaisons or other members? So uh, are you going to be um having like extra tiles made just for replacement purposes in case some crack and whatnot? Right. We're 
still going to be working with Don and Keith um, on a maintenance plan for this. Um, again, that hasn't been fully fleshed out yet just because we wanted to make sure it got through this approval process first, but that will be addressed okay. um, in our final agreements with them. The, the one other consideration I thought, and I hate to curate any component of this because it's, I think it's very elegant and, and, and uh, representative. Uh, the one thing that maybe you might want to consider is our um, historical significance of uh, indigenous people. Like, have you, is there anything on there that reflects on that component of our history? Um, not specifically, no. I think the um, idea to leave out maybe specific things that were um, European, post-European, um, was maybe thinking about that because to, you know, there's a lot to be proud of, like the example, the industry, we're pr proud of our industry, but sometimes by putting that in, it's also saying, you know, it's it's indicating the opposite of respecting the sometimes, you know, there's everybody has their own take on those kind of things. But I think the absence of some of those things was the way to do that. With, so it's not beating people over the head with um, some things either. So it's it's trying to be safe in that sense. But I, mm -hmm. I, I totally hear what you're saying. And I think that there's metaphorical ways, you know, you could interpret some spiritual things from the tree and from the river. Um, but the and like, you know, leaving out co contemporary fishing methods, there's the sailboat in there, which is probably the only thing. But so I, I hope that that is good enough in that sense. But you're, but you're right, there's nothing specifically that addresses that. But it okay. is, there is potential for participants to, in their mm -hmm. own take, include that on their tile. That's a good point. Yes. Yeah. Along that line, I mean, there is like a visual, if we could even swapping out like a, a more uh, rooted Menominee design for a, one of the fish, or if there's some sort of tie in that way where you could sort of bridge that gap would be a great way. My only concern or consideration, uh, just making sure it's been discussed and thought of, is some of the consideration around uh, water quality in our community, as we've talked about this in other areas, and just making sure that there's not a potential misread on some of the more abstract elements of it. You know, like the, there is a narrative that goes out with it about the importance of our water. And this is, that's the one thing I'd be concerned about is that this isn't a statement about, you know, again, the beauty of having an abstract design is that it's abstract, but there's also that transfer interpretation of of that. So I just want to make sure that, you know, we're not inadvertently. Yeah, well, that's one idea, this, this gave me another idea. I just thought of this as you were speaking, both of you, um, that maybe we could have prompts, like maybe printed out sheets, because some people have the creative block when they just get there of what to do. Usually with kids, that's not the case. I've always thought they just go right for it. And, and but maybe there can be prompts like you were talking about um, some of these things we just were talking about and other things we can research. Um, and then that way they can work those into their, their tiles individually too which would be kind of nice. Um, you know, it'd be nice if they had their own individual take on things too, but some of them will become at a loss, especially, especially probably at a certain age group where, you know, that, that sense of um, wonder goes away for a little while. Um, and then they can, like you said, the Menominee take on the fish, maybe they could work that into their own tiles um, and that there could be educational didactic things we could have ready to go for that. So that's one idea anyway. If I, if I can suggest, um, in regards to the fish, the Menominee, uh honor and celebrate the sturgeon fish. Um, the sturgeon fish is a storyteller for their tribe. So it's just something to consider. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm writing all these things down and maybe as the um, we go back to our smaller downtown group, we can talk about some of these things and add to them. Yes, definitely open to that. To all these suggestions, very good suggestions. Any other comments from our liaisons? Um, or or other members before we close the floor. Okay, uh, can I get a motion to close the floor, please? Motion to close the floor. Second. Ed. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Okay, thank you so much, Don and Jenny, for your description. I mean, I'm definitely in favor of uh of this and moving forward with it. it's a no-brainer it's already paid for so 
I'm definitely in favor. Uh, any other comments? Okay. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing that uh, mosaic soon. Thank you all. Thank you. Regular business item number two. Uh, consideration with possible action to amend the art grant application to a rolling schedule. Laura? Yes. During our March 2020, um, not 20, 22nd of 2023 meeting, you all approved the materials for our newly updated art grant program funded with ARPA funds, America Rescue Plan Act dollars. After talking with some several artists and several organizations within the community, figuring out more of what their need is and what our program was set out to do, which is to kind of spur economic activity and, and increase artistic vibrancy in the community. Initially, we approved it more so just for staff mental capabilities <laughs> to have a, a application deadline on a annual basis once a year, uh, with this year being the deadline of July 10th. Talking with a number of artists and organizations and just the nature of how projects kind of, the process kind of falls together and all of a sudden you have everything in order and you just need that last bit of money to really kind of get it over the edge. Having that, that harsh deadline is not uh, very, very accommodating for a lot of our art groups that are interested in applying for these funds. And just as a kind of staff interest, I think we really want to get these dollars out into the community. So we're I'm looking to have the, the application amended to have it be on a rolling basis that will accept and award uh, projects until funds are depleted. That makes sense to me. Does anybody have questions uh, regarding this change? So will staff then be setting like a monthly due date in a sense so that you're not inundated with these regularly and you actually just, you know, all right, if we do it on March. This is the time frame for March. And that way it's a little bit more uh, organized. For yeah, you. <laughs> in the... So already kind of thinking of okay, if I'm if you guys approve the amendment, making the amendments to the current application, I have it set out recommending that applicants plan roughly two months before, like, okay, I need money October. You probably want to apply two months prior to that, just knowing that it has to go through this body and then it has to go through council and paperwork takes a bit of time. So in the amendment, I have uh, notifying artists and organizations to plan roughly two months ahead of when they need funds. Um, so whatever that month is, two months prior to when they need it, for my deadline and for staff deadline to get it on the agenda to you, I have it set that they need to have materials in by the second Friday of the month. Um, otherwise, if it's received after that, it'll get held over until the following month. So hopefully it <laughs> creates a little bit of um, ease, but then still there might be some meetings where I come to you guys and we have eight applications that we have to review um, or two or whatever as they roll in and as funds are, are divvied out. Okay. I think this uh, shift is going to make this application and this grant more accessible to more artists and it will align with their schedules rather than then, uh, them aligning with our schedule. So um, anytime we have the chance to make it more accessible, I'm in favor of it totally. So um, I'd be in favor of moving forward with this. Uh, so there's a motion to approve. Yeah, is there any other comments that people wanna make regarding this feeling one way or the other? Yeah, then go ahead, Alex. Motion to approve. Second the motion. All in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Okay, we're gonna make that shift. Regular business item. Sorry, I'll Laura. Work on, I'll work on making those updates. Thank you very much. Item number three, consideration with possible action to review the approve and approve the percent for the art project proposal steps for the city east project, referring back to the commission by common council during the June 6th regular meeting. So this is a very familiar item since we just discussed it last month. Uh, and as you said, Kent, it has been referred back uh, to the commission by common council. There were some safety concerns that were brought up during the meeting. And I believe that since you are the, the lead artist on this project, I believe there's already been some discussions occurring about potential ways to navigate that. Um, like we said, though, we don't necessarily need to come to a decision today. Uh, we're just recognizing that it's been referred back to us and we need to review it again. Right. So an update on my end is, uh, and I, I, there's a few people that are with us today that may want to comment on this. So after my remarks, we can open up the floor if those people are interested in speaking. Um, the, the concern was that people would start to uh, climb on the sculpture and that was brought uh, forth by Aunt Ra Randy Scannell. And um, so I connected with Randy and he had some discussions with staff and also I believe with uh, some members of uh, the neighborhood of, from which the sculpture is going to be put. And they suggested that if we raised the entire sculpture up to a level that the first step was at four feet, um, that would strongly deter people from, from climbing it just because of the inaccessibility to climb it at four feet. Um, and I thought aesthetically that wouldn't impede uh, the narrative too much. And that was a far better solution than putting a fence around it, uh, which had been discussed. So um, we decided that, okay, like we'll, let's move forward with that idea and see if uh, uh, that will work for folks. Um, so that, that's good with me, was good with Randy. Um, and uh, so that being said, um is there anybody on the floor or uh, in the in the room or on uh, virtually who would like to speak on this item if so you can say raise your hand i'm just glad you provided that explanation kent it's uh we didn't really talk about it at council randy just sent it back and said safety concerns and i think i was the only one that voted against sending it back i was good with it but um if you're willing to compromise, like I just, I don't like it too much, especially when city council uh, gets in the business of um, defining what the art should look like. But if you're good with it, Kent, I'm good with it. Thank you, Brian. I guess second questions too is, is the neighborhood okay with the adjustment and is the developer okay with the adjustment? Good questions. And to my knowledge, uh, Randy did reach out um, to Kelsey uh, uh, Letso, um, and, and Kelsey, you're here. And if you wanna comment on that, uh, feel free and I can, we can open up the floor for you. Um, but my understanding is that uh, Randy did connect with Kelsey and uh, it seems like she thought that was um, a good solution. So if I'm, if I'm misspeaking, Kelsey, feel free to correct me. Motion to open and, the floor. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The floor is open. Kelsey, if you're there, uh, would you mind just providing us uh, some direction from the conversation you may have had with Randy? And if yeah, so, hello. Hi, hi, Kelsey. Can you name uh, say your name and address for the for the record, please? Yep, Kelsey Letso, four two seven South Baird Street, Green Bay. Um. Yeah, I'm here just listening, just to hear what you guys have to say. Um, Alyssa is also on the call, and she's actually the one who um, talked with Randy, so she might have a little bit more insight. But I think, I mean, I appreciate you guys acknowledging the safety concerns that were brought up. Um, 
and I think it's a good solution. So maybe Alyssa has something else. <laughs> Thank you, Kelsey. Alyssa, would you like to uh, say anything? If so, please state your name and address for the record. Hi, Alyssa Profit, 1262 Cherry Street. Yeah, Randy did give me a call and we talked about this. And yeah, just because it's so close to my home and the, the climbing concern, because we see the kids in the trees already and the proximity to the street. I'm very excited that, um, you know, we are heard and to raise that just slightly and it hopefully, you know, doesn't affect your design because I think it's a beautiful piece and I'm really excited to see more art in our neighborhood. So just thank you very much. Um, we appreciate it and I'm excited to see it get built. Thank you, Alyssa. Uh, I think that's it from the floor. Motion um, to close the floor. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Okay, well. Sounds like uh, the neighborhood is on 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 board. I'm on board. Motion and to approve with the proposed modification. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Okay. Hey, Kent, you want an abstention on that vote? Yes, I'm I abstained from that. I didn't I did not say anything. So for the record, yes, abstention. Hutchison. Thank you. Okay, so moving forward with informational item number one, coordinators report and project updates. Laura? Yes, so not a whole lot has changed since we met just a few weeks ago. Still working on getting the rotating art program pieces swapped out with the ones that you had approved at our last meeting. Still waiting on TDS artwork with parks and coordinating with TDS on how that's going to be looking. But luckily it's still the warm weather season. So we have a good chunk of time yet to get those installed. Um, I saw a few of you at the Mather Heights mural celebration. So thank you for coming out for that. Uh, and then I don't know if you want to share a little bit about Shipyard Mural. Shipyard Mural is progressing along. We've been in talks with the artists. We're looking at the last half of July, early August, for those murals to be going up. We have to do some prep to that area under the bridge before that happens, but that is moving along. So excited that we'll finally see those up um, this summer. Awesome. And then most likely at our next meeting, we will have um, some block grant recommendations for this year. Exciting. Great. As Anything our next meeting will be July 26 at the normal Wednesday. Uh, great. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Is there a motion to adjourn? It's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Close nay. Meeting adjourned.